Don't touch that dial. This is the station. Relax. Listen to Blondie. Before we join the bumsteads of Shady Lane Avenue, let's gather around the bandstand for a curtain raiser from Lisa Adrian. Raise that curtain, Lisa. Do not wait until some deed of greatness you may do. Do not wait to shed your light afar. To the many duties ever near you now be true. Bright in the corner where you are. Bright in the corner where you are. Bright in the corner where you are. Someone far from harbor you may guide across the bar. Bright in the corner where you are. Just above the clouded skies that you may help to clear. Let not narrow self your way debar. Though into one heart alone may fall your song of cheer. Bright in the corner where you are. Bright in the corner where you are bright in the corner where you are someone far from harbor you may guide across the bar bright in the corner where you are here for all your talent you may surely find a need here reflect the bright and morning star even from your humble hand the bread of life may feed Bright in the corner where you are. Bright in the corner where you are. Bright in the corner where you are. Someone far from harbor you may guide across the bar. Bright in the corner where you are. Thank you, Lisa. This week's episode is being sponsored by the Watertown Players, your favorite community theater troupe for more than 30 years. You know, folks, I've lived in Watertown a long, long time. Why, I've lived here so long that I remember when the Octagon House had only seven sides. Now, because I've lived in Watertown such a long time, I've had to get used to certain not-so-pleasant things about our city, like one-way streets and roundabouts in the middle of nowhere and two water streets that are at completely opposite sides of town. But the one thing that I absolutely love about Watertown is, of course, the Watertown Players. Where else can you get a brand new episode about your favorite family, the Bumsteads, each and every week? Nowhere, folks. And don't you forget it. The Watertown Players, dedicated to enriching the lives of those in this and surrounding communities through creativity, expression, and fun. And now, here we are in the Bumstead kitchen again on a fine Sunday morning. It's my guess that all that string and wax paper, sandwich bread and assorted pickles are preparations for a picnic. Baby Dumpling looks a little wistful as he watches Blondie fix the lunch. Baby speaks. We're going hunting, aren't we, Mommy? No, Baby Dumpling. Just on a little picnic. Well, maybe you're going on a picnic, but... I'm going hunting, and Daddy's going fishing. It ought to be quite a day, if we ever get started. Can I take my water pistol, Mommy? You'd better not. I think I'd better, Mommy. We might meet a moose. We aren't very likely to meet a moose on a picnic. We might. Daddy met one in a store last week. I know, but that was just a moose head on the wall. Daddy told Mr. Fuddle he hit it in the first shot. Yes, and everything else in the store with the second shot. I had quite a time, but it turned out all right. It turned out good. The man gave Daddy my water pistol. I'm not sure that was such a good thing. Can I have my water pistol back now, Mommy? No. Why, Mommy? 
You know very well why, because you were naughty. Poor little Alvin Fuddle, in his best suit, too. Alvin didn't like that suit anyway. His mother did. You shouldn't have filled your pistol from a mud puddle. Well, I had to work fast. I was a hunter and he was a moose and he almost got away. A moose? Alvin does look a little like a moose. They're training his ears back now, though. His mother ties them at night. Well, I wish I could tie your father at night. I don't know any other way to keep him from eating us out of house and home. Just look at this. Cheese? What's left of the cheese? And look at this ham. Maybe it was Daisy ate the ham. Dogs love ham. If it was, Daisy certainly sliced it neatly. Oh, my cold chicken. Both drumsticks gone. Baby, where is your father? Out in the garage, working on his invention. Invention? What invention? It's a secret, but it's a fish invention. Well, you run out and tell him. Blondie! Hey, Blondie! Never mind, here he comes. I've got it, Blondie. It's finished. Look it. Why, what on earth is that, Dagwood? It looks like some kind of a bug. That's just what the fish will think. Oh boy, this is only part of it. Hey, baby, run out in the garage and bring Daddy the little tin can on the windowsill. Okay, Daddy. Now look, Blondie, see these little feathers on this thing? Know what they are? Yes, they're all that's left of the bird of paradise my mother gave me. How did you find that? Don't worry about that. If this thing works, we'll be rich, and I'll buy you a bird of paradise farm. You'd better buy some more food for lunch first. You've eaten all we had. We won't need it. I'll catch plenty of fish with this, and we'll boil them. If it works. It's got to work. Listen, you know there are two kinds of fishermen, don't you? You mean the ones that catch fish and the ones who don't? Yes. Uh, no. I mean there's the bent pin or fishing hole kind. They use worms for bait. Then there's the dry fly fishermen. Don't tell me they use flies. Why, they couldn't get them on a hook. They aren't real flies. They're made of feathers like this. Fly fishing is more sporting because more fish get away. Oh, well, what kind are you going to be, Dagwood? Both. I'm going to use a feathered worm. I figure if a man can catch two fish with a fly while another man is catching three fish with worms, why not use both and catch five fish, see? No. Well, look at this invention of mine. The feathers are mounted on a little piece of leather, see? That's the saddle for the worm. Are you going to buckle a worm into that thing? Sure. You're catching on now. It doesn't hurt the worm a bit, so he lasts longer, see? The worm has lots of room to wiggle. He can kind of beckon to the fish. Oh, Dagwood. Cute, hey? Uh, then, when there's no fish around, the worm can kind of lean back in the saddle and rest. Oh, <laughs> Dagwood! All right, go ahead and laugh. They laughed at Fulton, too, when he invented the tea kettle. I can't help laughing at the idea of a feathered worm. Oh, where are you going to get the worms? I've got two already. I probably won't need the spare. But don't the fish bite the worms, Dagwood? If the worm's got sense, he'll dodge. Then the fish bites the candy instead. Candy? Oh, uh, didn't I tell you? Sure, my invention doesn't use any hook, just some butterscotch. The fish bites into that and he can't open his jaws again, so you've got him. Well, I still think you ought to have more than two worms, in case of accidents. Oh, I thought of that too. I can get worms anywhere at short notice. That's where my other invention comes in. See this? It looks like my old toasting fork. Well, it was. Now it's an electric worm digger. Now, Dagwood, what on earth is an electric worm digger? This is. I saw one in a store last week, so I came home and made this. See, you stick the fork down into the ground, and then you plug this end into a socket, and the electricity runs down these wires and heats up the fork. That makes the worms nervous, so they come up out of the ground and you just pick them up. Simple, eh? Yes.
But there's just one thing, Dagwood. Anything you don't understand, just ask me, Blondie. I've thought this all out. Well, where are you going to get the electricity from out there in the woods? Why, you just... Huh? Daddy, here's the little tin can. It's got two worms in it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think we'd better dig some more, baby, before we leave. Hey, baby, what's that you got there? That's my fish pole, Daddy. It's the top joint of my fishing rod. I wondered where that went to. You can't have that, baby. I wanted to fish like you. Well, that's all right. I'll let you hold my fishing rod sometimes. But you mustn't touch Daddy's things. Always remember not to take anything unless it's all yours or you ask for it. Very good advice, Dagwood. Who ate this cake? Cake? Yes. There was a whole new cake on this plate last night. Now there are nothing but a few crumbs. Well, I had one piece. One? Just at first I had one, I mean. It was very good. Uh-huh. But I couldn't seem to tell if it was chocolate or more on the ginger side, so I had to try another piece. Well, the first one was more like chocolate, but the next was pretty gingery, so I took that third one to make sure. That should leave one piece, even the way you cut cake. Oh, well, I didn't see much use in leaving just one piece. Never take anything unless it's all yours or you ask for it, Dagwood. What are Baby Dumpling and I going to do for cake on this picnic? Well, gosh, I'm sorry. I don't think it's a very good example for Baby Dumpling. Aw, don't rub it in, Blondie. I, I'll buy a cake. You won't have to, darling. I have another. What? You don't think I'd bake just one and leave it in plain sight, do you? The day before a picnic? I guess not. Baby Dumpling, your mother is a smart woman. Uh, where is that other one, Blondie? Couldn't you find it? No, uh, I mean, of course I didn't look very hard. It wouldn't have done any good. I still have one place to hide things that you haven't discovered, thank heaven. Now don't stand there licking your chops. I'm not going to take that cake out while you're watching. Go get those worms. My goodness, we'll never get started on this picnic. Well, here we are. Boy, what a spot. Look at it, Blondie. I have looked at it. Are you sure we ought to have our picnic here, Dagwood? What's wrong with it? Nice grass, trees, and a pond of water full of fish. It's gonna rain, though. Oh, no, baby. Those clouds are too far away. How do you know there's fish in that pond? Well, I bet there's a fish under every one of those lily pads. I can't wait to get out my feathered worm in the water and try it out. Well, if you think it's all right. Gee whiz, Blondie. We passed a dozen other places and you didn't like any of them. I didn't like that lovely swamp you wanted to fish in, if that's what you mean. And I wasn't crazy about having lunch in that other place where the hornets were. And one place Daddy was afraid of the bull. I was not. But the sign said, beware of ugly bull. I don't think any bull is very good looking. It meant a mean-tempered bull. Hey, baby, hold this worm for Daddy while I put the saddle on him. Well, I'll spread the lunch right near the water here. There are ants up above there. Well, I'm glad we found this place. It's the best spot we've come to. It's going to rain, though. No, baby. Now don't spoil the picnic. This place is almost too good to be true. Everything is so neat. And I'm sure that sign down the road meant something. Maybe it did once. But if they wanted anybody to read it, they ought to have kept it painted. Look, here goes my invention in the water. Oh, boy. Let me hold the pole, Daddy. You said I could. Let me, Daddy. Gosh, baby, can't you wait a minute? I've hardly got my line wet. Let Daddy fish a minute, baby. 
Yeah, I'll probably get a bite right away. I'm going to throw it over near that big water lily. That's the biggest lily I ever saw, and such a lovely color. Lots of flowers around. You go pick Mommy some flowers, baby. All right, Daddy. Oh, don't step backward without looking, Dagwood. The cake's right behind you. Shh. I think there's a fish looking at my feathered worm. He probably thinks he's seeing things. He'll go for it in a minute. Now what makes this cake so high in the middle? Why, Dagwood, look! What? I can't. I'm fishing. There's something in this cake. Between the layers, it makes a big lump. Well, uh, lift a layer and look. Well then, oh! What is it? Baby Dumpling's water pistol. He hid it in the cake. Oh, it's got chocolate all over it. I'll lick it off for you. Now listen to me, Baby Dumpling. Baby, where are you? Picking flowers, Mommy. Baby, come out of that pond. Yes, Baby. If you muddy the water, the fish can't see the bait. He's got his shoes and stockings on. Baby, come here. Look at Mommy. I picked a big flower for you. He picked that big water lily. Here, Mommy. It's a pretty purple one. Put it in your hair, Mommy. Oh, baby, look at your shoes and stockings, soaking wet. I don't mind, Mommy. It's going to rain anyway, and I got you the flower. Well, thank you very much. I suppose I can't scold you for picking me a flower, but... Ask Daddy to take off your shoes right away. Oh, gosh, Blondie. I'm trying to fish. Well, I'm trying to get this lunch spread out, and I can't get my hands all muddy. If you want any lunch. Well, sure. I could eat a bite any time. These fish don't seem to be very hungry. Here, Baby Dumpling, I'll let you hold the fishing rod. Sit down here and hold it while I pull off your wet things. How do I know if a fish bites, Daddy? If you think one is biting, ask me. Give me your foot now. My, this water lily is lovely. I never saw one like this. It looks Chinese or something. Hold the pole still, baby. Don't make the fish chase the bait all around like that. I'm not moving it, Daddy. It's moving itself. Oh, well then I can... What? Why, maybe. Say... I think you've got a bite. Here, give the pole to Daddy. I want to catch him. I want to catch him. No, you'll let him get away. Let me take it. Gosh, this is a big one, I bet. Boy, look at him splash. Stand back, everybody. Give me room to play him. Don't step back, Dagwood. The cake. Oh, you're on it. I'm getting him. Here he comes. Boy, he's fighting mad. I see him, Daddy. Pull him in. I am. I am. Look out now. Oops. There he is. Look, Blondie. My goodness, what a pretty fish. He's a big one, too. How big is he, Dagwood? I bet he's, well, pretty near four inches long at least. Throw him back before he dies, Dagwood. What? Why, I just caught him. But he's so pretty. Oh, the poor thing. I want to keep him, Daddy. I want him for a pet. Now, baby, where would we keep him? Hmm, in the bathtub. I could play with him when I took a bath. No, baby. He'll get soap in his eyes. Look, I'll drop him in my creel and put nice wet leaves on him. Boy, he's a beauty. I never saw a fish like that in my life. Why, he's got an extra tail. Yeah, but that purple stripe with silver spots is what gets me. Say, maybe I've discovered a new kind of fish. Maybe they'll name it after me. I think we ought to let it go. Aw, no, Blondie. Not unless I catch a bigger one. Hey, that's an idea. I'll try to catch another. Where's my spare worm? This one looks kind of tired. It's up in the car, dear. Boy, what a day! My inventions work, and I caught a new kind of fish! I've got a good mind to let this poor fish go. Look, Mama, there's a man coming. And I know it's going to rain. 
I suppose Dag would, would be furious if I let this get away, but... Mama, look, there's a man coming, and he looks cross. What? Oh, my, he does look cross. I wonder what's wrong. Look, he's talking to Daddy. Blondie! Oh, dear, trouble. The man is waving his arm. Blondie! It's rainy, Mommy. I knew it would. Hush, baby. What's wrong, Dagwood? Why, uh, this man says that we, I, oh gosh. No profanity, please. It's enough to find you trespassing here without adding insult to injury. That it is. He talks funny, Mama. Quiet, baby. Oh, I don't know what the master will say to that. He can't stand the sight of a baby. That he can't. Oh, is that so? Well, I'm sure no one wants him to look at Baby Dumpling. You can tell him for me, whoever he is, that he's an old... an old... Shh! Blondie, we're in bad enough. Why, we're on somebody's private grounds, and it's against the law. Well, we can go. Oh, no, you can't. Not till I see if any arm's been done. We haven't done anything. We're just having a picnic. A picnic, eh? A picnic? In Mr. Propberry's private park? Ha! Huh. What's that in your hand, me lad? Just a worm. A spare worm. A worm? Blimey! You, you haven't been feeding these here fish worms, have you? Well, uh, no. Oh, no. I didn't feed them. They have a special food, you know. Worms wouldn't do at all. I didn't give them any worms. I was just using the worm for bait. Bait? Don't tell me you were fishing here. You can't fish here. Oh, is that so? Well, I did catch one. What? You caught one of Mr. Prattberry's imported Javanese dancing fish? It's impossible. It is not. If you don't believe me, look in that creel. I... I can't look. Why, you might as well have destroyed the Rario Lilis Aquatorarium. Goodness, what's that? Thunder! I'm getting wet, Mommy. No, I mean that long name. That, madam, is a flower. A rare flower. If you will look where I'm pointing to, you... Ow! What's the matter? Gone! It's gone! Do you mean this water lily? How? It, it is. Picked from its stem. Ruined. Do you know what you've done, madam? She didn't pick it. It was me. Oh, bad grammar, too. You leave his grammar out of this. Suppose we did pick one of Mr. What's-His-Name's flowers. We'll tell him we're sorry. Sorry? Do you realize, young fellow, me lad, that the Rario Illis Aquaterrarium comes from the interior of Tibet? That it takes five years and hundreds of dollars to bring to bloom? That it blooms but once before it dies forever? And that the owner hasn't even seen this one bloom himself as yet? Gosh, I'm sorry. Um, but why didn't he come see it if it's so r rare and all? Mr. Prattberry is afflicted with gout, which prevents his moving about and does nothing to improve his temper. Mama, I'm all wet. Shh, baby, don't use slang. Oh, dear, he is all wet. So am I. I've been so excited I didn't notice the rain. Rhine or no Rhine, I must ask you all to come with me. Well, Rhine or no Rhine, uh... I mean rain or no, I mean, where are we going? Mr. Prattberry will wish to pass on your grave misconduct himself. Mr. Prattberry is a magistrate in these parts and can therefore impose any sentence or fine he sees fit. Oh, gosh, kind of a judge. And I am a special officer, so don't try any antics, me lad. We won't run away if that's what you mean. I'll be only too glad to get inside a house out of this rain. Indeed. 
If I was in your boots, I'd walk through the hardest rain that ever fell before I'd face Mr. Prattberry after destroying his flowers and catching his fish. However, it's all a matter of taste, I suppose. We can take the car. Over these lawns? Oh, no. Oddly, we'll jolly well walk. Oh, all right, I'll walk. But it won't be so jolly. How far is the house? I don't see it. One mile and one quarter, madam. As the crow flies, however. I know. We're no crows. Well, let's go. I'll tight the flower, poor thing. And the creel with the fish in it, poor thing. These will be evidence. I'll take what's left of the lunch. You will all walk ahead of me. And no tricks now or you'll be in more trouble. More trouble? Gosh, the way I get it, we're under arrest on three charges. And we've got to walk a mile and a half through a thunderstorm to meet a guy with gout who is going to bring the complaints against us and then try the case himself. The lunch is spoiled and my feet hurt and... and... And now I've caught a cold. If you can tell me how I can be in any more trouble, I... I certainly don't want to hear about it. This episode of Blondie is being produced and sponsored by the Watertown Players. I don't have to tell you folks that we are living in different times right now. Masks are the normal way of dressing. We have to refrain from shaking hands and do elbow bumps instead. And on top of that, my local grocery store has been out of my favorite microwave popcorn for months. All of these hardships make it tough to see the good things in life. Here at the Watertown Players, we hope that you count us as one of the good things in your life and that you are enjoying our weekly offering of Blondie. Keep tuning into Facebook so that you don't miss any of the amazing adventures of Blondie. And if you can, please consider a tax-deductible donation to help us keep Blondie on the air. More details at the conclusion of this episode. The Watertown Players, dedicated to enriching the lives of those in this and surrounding communities through creativity, expression, and fun. I... I wonder what's keeping that fellow so long. He's probably changing to dry clothes before he goes to see old Mr. Prattberry. He's as wet as we are. He's wetter, Mama. Why? Well, Daddy was carrying me, and the top of his hat was full of water. And I still had my water pistol. Oh, baby dumpling. Oh, I'm too tired to scold you. It's all my fault. I... I... Achoo. Sorry. We're all in it together, Dagwood. I do wish we could have waited in a warmer room, though. This is a big, cold house, and this hall is the draftiest place. Keep that blanket around you, baby dumpling. I should have read that sign on the road, like you said, Blondie. And I shouldn't have told baby to pick flowers. And I shouldn't have caught that fish. <coughs> you shouldn't have caught cold either, but you did. I'll see the man alone. No use of you and baby hearing him bawl me out. You just apologize nicely, Dagwood, and if he acts mean, just be dignified. Dig? <coughs> Nified? Oh, sure I will. I <coughs> will. Here comes the man to take you to Mr. Prattberry. This why, young man. Sure. Okay. I won't be long, Blondie. I hope. Achoo! I say, can't you stop that silly noise? It's my shoes. They're soaking wet. The, uh, person, sir. Hmm. Well, young man. Beefum here tells me you are not only a trespasser, but worse. How much worse, I'm still waiting to hear. 
Hard but fair, that's my motto. Let the accused hear the charges against him. Proceed, Beefum. Well, sir, I found this person with two other persons on the edge of the... The lily pool, sir. No, uh, where the, er, uh, the, uh, what do you call them, blooms? The Rario Lilis Aquatorarium, yes, sir. Go on. I charged them with trespassing at once, sir. Then, to Miora, I learned that wasn't all. No, well, speak up, speak up, what more? This person confessed, boasted, in fact, that he caught one of the himported Javanese dancing fish. That he did. Oh, he did. Boasted of it, eh? Well, have you the corpus delecti? No, sir. But here's the fish. Right in this creel, sir. Ow! What now, Beefum? It's gone, sir. The blinking creel's empty. Then we can't convict, no evidence, and I'm a fair man, even if it was my own fish. Well, I can be as fair as you are. The fish was in there. You, uh, confess? Yes, sir. I didn't know it was your fish. I didn't know it was anybody's fish. I thought I'd discovered it. Hmm. Your candor does you credit. Know where it went? No, uh, but I bet Blondie knows. She knows everything. A remarkable person. Who is Blondie? My wife. It was her at the... the Rario Lilis Aquaterrarium, sir. What? Yes, sir. Picked it, she had. She had not. Babe, I mean, I picked it. Picked the rarest flower known to botanists. Why, why, young man? Well... It was for my wife's hair. For your wife's hair. Hmm. I suppose you caught the fish for your wife's hair, too? That will do, Beefum. Bring Mrs. Uh, Bumstead. Mrs. Bumstead in. Yes, sir. Gosh, you didn't laugh at my name. Everybody does. I seldom laugh at anything. Too seldom, perhaps. Certainly I would not be guilty of insulting a man under my roof, not even a prisoner charged with, with picking a flower for his wife's hair. Ah, Mrs. Bumstead, come in. A chair for Mrs. Bumstead, Beefum, and place it near the fire. Yes, sir. Oh, thank you. Uh, but I can't leave Baby Dumpling out there in the cold hall. Uh, a baby? What's this, Beefum? I tried to keep it from you, sir. Where's your common sense, man? Bring the child in, near the fire. But you? A baby? Uh, very well, sir. Now then, Mrs. Bumstead, do you know what became of a very valuable oriental fish that your husband caught? I let it go again. Let it go? The poor thing was so pretty I couldn't see it die like that. Hmm. It will probably die in any case. The hook. Oh, there wasn't any hook. My husband invented a... something that catches them without a hook. It uses both a fly and a worm. Oh, what's this? What's this? An invention that... I know. It sounds silly. So did my invention. The one I made all my money on. The silliest little thing in the world. But it made millions. Don't let anyone laugh you out of your inventing, young man. Huh. <laughs> Put that flower back in your hair, Mrs. Bumstead. I'm sorry Baby picked it. Baby picked it, eh? I see. Your husband took the blame. Hmm. Did you think I'd be hard on a child, Bumstead? Your man said you didn't like children. I never see them. I... I think I'll tell you why. Come over here. Do you see this little tin type? It was taken when I was poor in money, but very rich in other things. I wouldn't part with it for the finest paintings in the world. Look at it. Oh, how pretty she is. And the, the baby. Yours? They were both mine. Long ago. I haven't wanted to see other children because I thought it would be easier to forget. It hasn't been. Ah, here he is. This is Baby Dumpling. 
Say how do you do, dear? Hello. I... I think I've been missing a lot. In fact, I've been an old fool. Come here, young man. Sure. Are those real whiskers? Baby dumpling. Pull them and see. Okay. Yep. They're long, too. Too long, do you think? No, I like them. Want to see my water pistol? Baby. Oh, it's empty. Too bad. Beef them. Yes, sir. A basin of water, please. What? A large basin of water. Ammunition, you know. Hurry. I, uh, yes, sir. At once, sir. Uh, Dagwood, baby's hands are all covered in chocolate frosting from that cake. Gosh, it's in his beard, too. Could I uh, wash baby's hands somewhere? They're so dirty. You see, we had a picnic and- Picnic, of course. That's why you came to my place. Well, we must have a picnic. The, uh, water, sir. And if I may say so, sir, the young gentleman in your, uh, lap is a rather accurate shot with that water pistol. Good. See if you can hit that bear rug over there, baby dumpling. Now beef them. Sir? Fetch a tablecloth. Tablecloth, sir? Yes, 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 for the picnic. Since it's raining outside, spread it on the floor. On the floor, sir? Yes, sir. Blimey. Come on, Dagwood. Let's get the food that's left. It's out in the hall. Well, sure, honey. I... gosh. Say, he's not a bad guy at that, is he? Shut the door. Oh, Dagwood, that poor old man. Poor? Why, look at the house he lives in. You know what I mean. Oh, Dagwood, I'm never going to scold Baby again when his hands are dirty or... or anything. Say, he liked my invention. And he didn't mind my having the flower. Well, I don't see how he'd have been able to walk down to that pool to see it anyway. He can't get out of that chair, can he? He doesn't, anyway. Open the door, Dag. My hands are full. Dagwood! What? Look over my shoulder. He is out of the chair. He's on his hands and knees playing with Baby Dumpling. Look, they're making believe hunt a bear or something. Gosh, Baby Dumpling certainly makes friends fast. He takes after his daddy. No, I'm the one that gets us all in a jam and... Say, where's the jar of jam we brought on the picnic? Oh, here it is. Oh, Dagwood, we're really going to have our picnic after all. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Those ants got into this jar of jam. And the butter. Say, there's ants in everything. Well, that proves it's a picnic. Come on. And so we leave Blondie and Dagwood of Shady Lane Avenue. We invite you to listen again next week when we join the Bumsteads once more. Next week's episode is entitled, The Zoo and the Jewelry Heist. <laughs> Sounds like a hoot and a half to me. This week's episode, The Bumsteads Go on a Picnic, featured the voice talents of Matt Emerson as Beefum, Carl Zarling as Mr. Prattworthy, Tara Jones as Baby Dumpling, Blaine Landowski as Dagwood, and of course, Lisa Steffel as Blondie. This week's episode was brought to you by the Watertown Players, your favorite community theater group for over 30 years. Remember to follow the Watertown Players on Facebook so you don't miss any exciting news on the entertainment front. This is your announcer, Jim Steffel, thanking you for supporting the Watertown Players and our weekly episodes of Blondie. For more information on how you can help fund these fine old-fashioned productions, please text Blondie to 44321. That's Blondie, B-L-O-N-D-I-E, to 44321. Thank you, and good night. <laughs>